you're going through training right now in Arizona, a, a, every night, is it the same routine every night? Yes, um, because we have 35 cities, we kind of have to have everything nailed down. So that's what we're working on currently. And I feel like we're actually ahead of schedule in our rehearsals and it absolutely looks amazing. It's gonna be super exciting and we can't wait for the finale after every show to bring some of the gold squad on the floor and have them party with us. Hey, we got some gymnasts out in the audience so they're gonna be watching and I'm sure one of the things they're thinking is, how early an age were both of you when you tumbled onto the mat and, and the follow-up what was it about it that did it for you like nothing else did? Yeah. <laughs> so we actually both started pretty late um, gymnastics. I was six years old. Same. She was six years old. But most people start in mommy and me classes. And personally, for me, I kind of love the flexibility of the sport, how we had four different events. So um, you have different strengths and flexibilities on each of the events, as well as forming your own routines to those strengths. For me, it was... I was really, really hyper and my parents couldn't control me. So they wanted to put me in something that I could let all my energy out. And I guess gymnastics was that sport I should be doing. And it just stuck with me. And also, I mean, the different types of things that everybody was doing, it was pretty cool. And I was like, oh, I want to do that. Like they look like they're superheroes, basically. Yeah. Hey, tell the truth. You probably had so much energy in the house. Your parents were like, oh, my God, let's get her in gymnastics to kind of tax some of that energy. Yeah. Yes. Well, for me, my parents have actually never really heard of gymnastics. My mom's from Belize, so it's kind of unheard of. But mine was actually a daycare field trip. We were supposed to go to the oil ranch in Texas. It started raining, so they were like, let's go to the gym down the street. And so that's where they took us on our daycare field trip. And I just started copying the big girls in the back. And the coaches came over and was like, wow, you're actually pretty strong and talented. Like, we'll send a letter home, see if you want to join. And that's how that happened. Oh, so you you you're like you're 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 in the back. You're just like you're tumbling and you're 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 perfecting all these things. And all of a sudden, they're like maybe they got their clipboard out and they're like, huh? Yeah. Miles. <laughs> wait, 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 we got we got to put a check mark by that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I want to segue a little bit into in, in, into this because it's a it's it's a hot button issue these days. I have I have two elite swimmers in my house, and between the the, the, the pressure of competing and, 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 and striving to be the best and, and, and the pressure of that. Then we all, oh, we got COVID, we got thrown into there. And the, 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 the mental aspect of elite athletes, how, how do you handle it? And what is the best advice you can give to some of these gymnasts and elite athletes out there watching? Just to speak out. Yeah, I would say speak up for what you believe in, take care of your mind, body, your soul, your health. Um, and I feel like we've struggled along the road of doing that because us as athletes, we kind of want to figure out our, everything out on our own and we don't want to ask for help um, because we're kind of stubborn and that's what makes us so good. But it's never too late or you're never too weak to ask for help and just go ahead and do that. Don't be afraid. Simone, I, I, I must ask you, being the best at this on the planet, can you... <laughs> Can, can you go to the 7-Eleven? Can you, can you go to Safeway <laughs> shop in, in the produce section? Or do you have to wear those oversized like glasses and the, the, the hat and go incognito? What, 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 what is life for you like? I mean, life is definitely crazy, but I feel like I've adapted over the years um, since I've been kind of on that global scene. But yes, I can go to the mall, I can go to the store. I might have a couple stops and take a couple pictures and autographs here and there, but I can definitely get through the store. Just takes me a little bit longer than I want to sometimes. This is one of my favorite ones, and this is for the both of you. When was the first time you realized you were famous? Okay, honestly, for me, it was after 2016 when we came back to the States. It was just everybody knew who we were. We were on everything. We were on every magazine, on every television show. It was, it was so crazy. I don't know when I will ever consider myself famous. I'm very like humble about certain things. Um, I, right now, even in this moment, like I still don't consider myself famous. So I don't know when that's going to happen. Um, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like she definitely <laughs> acknowledges the recognition she gets. Yeah, like I do. I do love how people are like, oh my gosh, like you're Jordan. Yes, this, that, and the other. But 
when it comes to like the famous part of things, I'm like, yeah. I still feel like for <laughs> us, it's weird. Like we're just gymnasts. We did our thing yeah. and then just move on. <laughs> Jordan, you know when it's going to happen? It's going to be happening when you, when you, when you whistle down for speeding, the officer comes, or Jordan, do you realize how fast? Whoa. I, uh, can you sign this for my wife? That's, 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 <laughs> oh, we get perks here and there. Yeah, right. <laughs> here and there. They might give us a little. Simone, that probably happens to you all the time, huh? Only once. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, <laughs> hey, a couple more and we'll get out of here. First of all, uh, where do you keep the gold, the gold and the silver medals? Where, where do you keep them? I keep mine in a safe. Um, my mom is the metal keeper. Mine's hidden in a safe where nobody can find it. <laughs> Let me tell you a story. You, 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 you won't believe this. I interviewed Mary Lou Retton once, and I asked her, where do you keep these gold medals? She told me for years she kept them in a Wonder Bread uh, wrapper underneath her bed. What? And, can you believe that? And, and, and it was only, it, I mean, it was, like 20 years later or whatever, her husband finally dug him out and then mounted him out and, and you know, now it's on the wall. But, 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 but I asked her about that and I was like, wow, man, how come you didn't put him on display? And she goes, well, you know, at some point you realized you did it. You know you did it. Everybody else knows you did it. I don't really have to kind of, you know, flex and just kind of display them all. Cause, so so that's, that, that, was, that was her response. That's awesome. I know some Olympians keep it in like a sock or a drawer or this and that. But a lot of us also keep them in a safe because I mean, we cherish them so much and they're very special. Hey, continue success on the store. We can't wait to have you in San Francisco. Thanks so much for a few minutes. You're Thank welcome. You. Thank you.